Okay, this is probably gonna look like a complete mess here. I'm working on the boiler system, trying to get that set up. So I've got all my pieces. I got the uh, pipe dope and all my things that go on the bottom. I think I've got everything laid out the way I want it to. Of course, it looks like a complete disaster down here, but I know where everything is and where everything goes. So under here, I've got my uh, gas connection. I've got that shooting out this way, which will come over and connect to that gas line. This was the uh, cold water supply. This is my hot water to the house. Um, up there, you can see where it splits. That goes off for the cold water for the downstairs, and the insulated pipe is my uh, hot for the downstairs, which has never been hooked up yet. Um, this is the makeup water connection, so if the system needs more water, it will open this valve and let water into the system. Um, this is my cold water connection. This is my hot water connection. This is for domestics. This will go to these lines over here. This is my one inch. Uh, this will be the hot side for the radiant heat. And this is my cold inlet for the radiant heat. This is a uh, condensate trap. This is the condensate drain. This is a hot water uh, inlet filter, which is blocked by my gas line, but there's no other way to do it. And then also I went ahead and bought a uh, spin down filter there which will go before it goes into the system as well. So I should never have to mess with that um, filter up there. I don't know what this is. <laughs> so I'm guessing maybe it's another filter, but I can't find it in the instructions anywhere. So this under here is very tight quarters. Um, once I get all my shutoff valves and fill valves and everything set up in here, um, it gets very... Oh, drop the gasket. It gets really tight. So getting this all put together is going to be a bit of a challenge. I've got everything prepped and ready to go to at least get my shutoff valves on. And I should have all the parts I needed to go ahead and cut this line and get the hot and cold water hooked up to run through the boiler. And then also to run a line over to the utility sink here and then run a line down over that way to the uh, craft kitchen sink is where that goes. So um, a couple other challenges I have is that the loop so the, your radiant system has its own loop and then the boiler system has its own loop so if you can picture the uh, motor out here just sending everything around through the radiant system and then over here this has its own loop and it's kind of confusing because between my hot water and my cold water to the boiler system they have to be connected down here you would think that it would be just one loop it would go up through this system, down through the pipes, back around and back up. But actually these are connected right here as a as like a dual um, loop. So I'm not 100% sure why that is. The only thing I can think of is that if these are still warm, it may just keep the external motor going and cycling the fluid through. And this can turn off for a while, so it could cycle it on and off. If this heated up, um, and these to shut off, this internal pump would stop. And then this external pump would not be there, and so the whole system would just stop. So I'm assuming that's why we have these, these two loops. Um, also, it's that I know I read somewhere where that it, so it doesn't get over overheated. Uh, this pump kicks on, it'll push water into the system, hot water into the system as needed. And this pump turns off, it just goes through the loop down here. That's the only explanation I can come up with. Um, I did call um, Reem about it, and I think the lady I was talking to I thought that I was a moron, <laughs> so she she treated me like I was a moron, and um, I got a few of the answers that I needed, but I may have to call them again. I hope I get a different tech, because she was um, basically like, what do you mean you don't know this stuff? Here I'm adding a splitter to the cold water in and the hot water out to feed the utility sink left of the boiler. I'll put links in the descriptions to all the parts that I've purchased in order to hook the boiler up.
When adding fittings to the bottom of the boiler, I would suggest assembling everything you can on the ground first where you have a lot more room. Here I use a roll of 1 inch PEX. I would suggest not using the rolled PEX since it is very hard to get straight. Instead you should buy the PEX sticks which will ensure that all your pieces are straight and look good when everything's done. I'm using an older style of ring crimper. It works great, but it's difficult to get into tight spaces. So again, assemble as much as you can on the ground first. Newer crimping tools are a lot smaller and easier to gain access, but can still be difficult in such hard to reach places. You'll notice that I'm using shark bite fittings. I do this where the PEX connects to the boiler. This is so in the future if I have to replace the boiler, I can simply disconnect the PEX at the shark bite connections as needed. It also allows me to connect and disconnect as I assemble the pipes. I dry fit the PEX as much as possible before crimping it down and installing it. I was getting pretty close and I realized that I screwed up and I forgot to put this fitting in. This one's going to go right there and it will come up and then over into my um, auto feeder right there. I forgot that one. So before I get all this done in place, I'll go ahead and tap that guy in there. Um, according to the instructions, you're supposed to have four inches between the um, any close tees like this. So I'm pretty sure it means a minimum of four inches. Um, I went ahead and cut this sack. It's supposed to be four between the center line and center line. So this is probably about four and a half maybe. But I looked online too. They actually sell a kit that puts this loop in there. And their distance is uh, I think it's five or six. So I think I'm well within reason as far as what they're doing there. And then after the T, you're supposed to have six inches. So I've got six inches here, six inches there. The only place I'm not going to have it is that I've got to get this over into there now. So that's not going to be six inches. I'll get it up as high as I can. The only other option would be to lower that down, but then I'm getting close to this one. I've got to have this one come underneath. So hopefully that won't be um, too big of an issue. The one online, it kind of like just does a nice little swoop over like that. but. I don't have that option. Again, links to many of the parts I've used in setting the boiler up are in the description.
A flexible gas line is really handy here to work around all the different pipes and fittings that come out of the bottom of the boiler. Here I'm using a steel cinch ring and ratchet tool on the one inch pecs. My copper rings don't go up to one inch. The tool is smaller, but it's honestly a lot harder to use as you don't have as much leverage. Because the wall behind the boil is sheathed with OSB, I can easily mount the piping to the wall with clips or wooden blocks. Here I have to adjust the depth of the pipe I need to cut off the copper crimp ring. You can do so with a pair of wire cutters or a small hacksaw and pair of pliers. You can really see here how the shark bite fittings have an advantage when I have to modify things. Okay, so here's how my spaghetti works turned out. Um, everything up here is already I've got everything tightened down and good to go. Um, I almost forgot to put the um, makeup line in, but I was able to add that before I tightened all this up. I did mention earlier that you need to have a backflow preventer in here. Since this goes straight into your boiler line um, inside the tank, it uh, could potentially take some of the line that's in your radiant heat and put it back into your water supply if you don't have a backflow preventer on it. So I got that set up and got my lines going off to the utility sink and got my lines heading over to uh, the craft kitchen, which will get hooked up later. Um, so like I said, this was supposed to be what it said is it has to be uh, three tube diameters. So I'm using a one inch tube in between these T's should be four inches. And then after a T is supposed to be uh, six tube diameters, so this would be six inches. I've got six inches here, and like I said, this is the one where I wasn't, there's no way I could get six inches in there. So this is three, and that's five. I don't know if that's going to really cause any issues, but I didn't really have a good way around it. Um, I got these pointed off at a slightly little bit of an angle, so that they'll end up resting on my board here when I get to that point. But beyond that, that's all pretty much hooked up and ready to go now. It went uh, a bit smoother than I thought. Once you start putting things together it starts to really take shape. So uh, when you first start a project, I must have sat here and looked at this for you know a half hour yesterday trying to figure out what I needed and what parts I needed and if it was going to fit. But then once you start piecing everything together, it actually uh, usually works out pretty good. Sometimes it's a disaster, but this, this went uh, fairly good. One of the problems I couldn't figure out was how to get this line back in here with my gas line being so close and be able to get the valves to turn. And it's still pretty tight. Getting in here to tighten these wasn't very easy. Um, that's part of the reason why I use shark bite fittings is that I can just push these in. I don't have to worry about getting in there and get another wrench in to try and tighten everything up. Um, I've seen people use PEX line before for doing this, so I'm not overly worried about it. This is oxygen barriered, so this will not allow any air to seep in as it's flowing. However, this is not. So, um, that's why you get one of those, which is a uh, air eliminator. And this I ordered wrong. That one I ordered was accidentally a three quarter inch. You need a one inch. So I get that ordered. Um, we should be here by Friday. I hope this is Sunday. So by Friday, I'll get that in. 
Um, that's the last component I believe I'm missing um, to finish this out. But I still need to get the manifold set up over there, get my one inch lines piped over and up the wall into the expansion tank and the pump and the filter, um, and then into my manifold, which is right there. Not quite done yet, but this was a pretty big element of it that's finally finished.